Hi folks, this is Dragon, 1st of January 2012, Happy New Year, um, Happy New Year tomorrow for the other members on the forum when you eventually get to the New Year. Uh, we're out at our retreat, or BOL, spending a few days out here cleaning up, we've still got a lot more to do. Anyway, I thought I'd do a bit of a video on bushcraft, it's something I've done ever since I was a kid in the uh, scouting movement and learned a lot from that. And basically it's just using raw materials that you've got around the place. A bit of imagination, think outside the box and, uh, and away you go. And what we did yesterday afternoon, Mr Dragon and myself gave me a hand as I made a wash stand. Now, we'll just pan around here. This is our latrine or pit toilet. As you know, field hygiene is very important. Um, bit of bushcraft again. Okay, we're using man-made materials, but um, these blue tarps stand up pretty well. These are a bit weather-worn, they've got to be replaced, but we can use thatching as a wall on these um, using rice flour plants, which is like these ones over here, they make very good thatching uh, for walls um, and shading for roofs. Very easy plant to pull out, very shallow root system, very easy to work with. Uh, rice flower tree, uh, the flowers on those are highly prized by the arts and crafts people, but it's just gone berserk in this place. The back of the uh, pit toilet. Originally when we built this, we used um, native uh, timber, namely black wattle, like that tree, if you just pan around, this tree here is what we call a black wattle, it's a native tree to Australia, um, the problem with black wattle is that once you cut it down it dries out, the timber deteriorates very quickly, so consequently uh, what we decide to do, if we pan around again, is we've got some hardwood um, garden stakes. And just put it together like that. Now, there's no nails or anything used in this. What I used was basic knots, using square hitches or variations of square hitches to put it all together. Tie up the support rails, the posts, uh, with orange baling twine. Now I'll get onto that in, in about the baling twine in a minute. So that's our pit loo there. Um, just want to walk this way. Very simple. That's the doorway there. People go in, toilet seat. It's just a uh, steel drum in the ground when we put it in. It's been in for about oh, 15 years now went down about six feet it's just about reached the end of its service life so we're going to be looking at digging a new one soon and of course a vent pipe on it too to vent out any gases um, so there you go we put this umbrella up as a shade one to uh, protect you, anybody sitting on the loo in the middle of the day so they get sunburned and two to try and keep the toilet seat a bit dry nobody likes to sit on a wet toilet seat trust me alrighty if we move over this way Bit of bushcraft. Now, what we did yesterday afternoon was we made up a wash stand. And rather than cut down green trees and all that sort of thing, I just had a bit of a wander around the place and there was a bit of dead um, black wattle still standing. Um, so I pulled those down and just basically broke them up with my foot like in a previous video I made on how to break timber using forks and trees and that sort of thing. So in actual fact this timber has been cut, you can see with the ragged edges on it. Um, I see you. Tied it to this uh, tree here with a support beam across there using the baling twine tied off to this branch that stabilises it to stop it rocking this way 
Then, on the other end, I made the legs for it using the cross brace system. <coughs> Rather than have vertical legs and try and stabilise it, I decided to do it this way. That works very well. It's very solid. Won't take human weight sitting on it. It wasn't designed for that. It's basically to stand a wash basin on there with water in it, a bit of soap and so on. So it was all put together with green twine, uh, not the green twine, the um, baling twine. Uh, the variations of square hitches, basic knots. I think there's a link on the forum about basic knots. Made up the frame and then we just cut, or didn't cut, we broke smaller portions off, fit across the top of the frame and just wove baling twine in and out. Like that, you can see that it's sort of like a cross stitch, I suppose you could call it. Very solid. I wouldn't sit on it, it wasn't designed to sit on it, but it takes a basin of water, take a soap, wash your hands in it after you've been to the the toilet and of course after night we've got a kerosene lantern going here as a night light for anybody that needs to, to use it. Now baling twine. Bloody great stuff this. Very strong. Quite inexpensive. Best thing about it is it's UV stabilized doesn't break down in the sun. I've got a piece here, this believe it or not, this piece looks a bit tattered, still quite usable. This is 15 years old. I've used it on various other projects around here and of course one of the things in the bush or any um, survivalism that sort of thing is to salvage what you can, reuse what you can. So yeah it looks a bit tattered but still strong. You can use it to cut itself that knot just broke. But by doing that, you can use, actually use it to cut itself. That's a bit of bushcraft. The other one is, this was made oh, about 18 months ago. Probably a little bit longer. By one of our group members. Just a basket. Woven out of materials found around um, this site here and basically what he did was this is a uh, black wattle shoot off the ground they usually propagate through the root system they just pop them up and away they go he made the frame out of the, the green um, tweaks started off there I don't know if you can see the binding on it how he started off the binding on there on the base of it was he peeled the green bark off this and tied it up. It's a, it's a sort of um, uh, cordage. All right. Then what he did was he just stripped all the leaves off and just did this all the way around like that. He then put some around here, just weaved it in and out of the, the um, frame, just to give it a bit more strength. Then he used a bit of native grass, we cut a lot of it down, um, something like this, okay, only it was green. The reason why he did it was green, all the stuff in here was, he, he used was green, was that was easy to work with and when it dries out holds its shape. 18 months old. Just a basic basket used, used for a hat, used for carrying dry food products, anything like that. The handle, as you can see the vine here, also grows in this area. Wave around the top just to give it added strength and a couple of handles on it. That's just using that vine also grows in this area. So you could probably flatten it down and beat it out a bit and make um, 
a bit uh, more sophisticated cordage. The reason why I used uh, baling kind on this is that in this area uh, with the plant material we've got, the cordage, yes it's good stuff, but when you're looking at a long term uh, situation where you want low maintenance stuff, and this is one of the things you've got to work out at a BOL or a retreat, you know, you've only got so many human resources and when you build stuff you've got to work out, you know, do, you, do I have to repair this every day because the cordage is broken on it. And cordage will break down, we've had a lot of wet weather out here over the last two years. So this, this things you've got to work out. Um, because believe me, keeping a site going like this, just day-to-day -day routine stuff, takes a lot of human resources and material resources as well. And that's apart from everything else, from growing crops to um, defence, foraging teams, you name it. So it takes a lot of management to keep sites like this going on a day-to-day -day basis and of course planning further down the track for, for longer term projects and things like that. Now. The other thing is salvaging. Survivalists <laughs> learn to salvage anything, whether it be man-made or natural. Okay, piece of steel. You don't find this stuff growing on trees. There's no iron ore around here. There's no smelters, no nothing like that. So if you've got foraging teams out there, looking for stuff like this, steel, any sort of thing. We've got some charcoal we salvage from the fireplace over there, good charcoal forge. You can make tools out of this. Gardening tools, knife blades, not necessarily out of this, but if you get my drift, you know, anything steel. We've got a heap of stuff in there that we've salvaged over the years. Comes in use for something. Improvisation it's called. A lot of metal there. Uh, we've got fencing wire around the place, so that's the sort of thing you've got to look at. There's a lot of stuff that you can't get in your area, so you've got to learn to salvage what you can. So um, that's something to think about, folks. Survival is all, all covers a lot of things. Using natural and man-made resources, learning how to salvage stuff, learning how to use it, reshape it, think outside the box with ideas like that. Make life a little bit simpler uh, to reduce and help with uh, resource management. That's human resource and material resources as well. So that'll give you some idea folks anyway. Um, we pan around the uh, the site. Now down to the left here, uh, we've got a caravan, what they, they call them uh, trailers in the United States. Um, I've taken the wheels off that so theft uh, doesn't get, you know, someone hitch it up to a vehicle and drive it away. We can sleep about 10 vehicles in that van, we've got a lot of gear stored in there. This one here in the centre is basically a storage area. It's a very old van, that one will never move again. Um, and the one off to the right here is a smaller van which can sleep um, probably four to six people in there on beds and more on the floor if you need it. Once again, these vans were salvaged. Um, bought them second hand from old places. I uh, had to do extensive renovations on the inside of that one. This is going back about 10 years ago. There was a lot of water damage in it. Had to completely re uh, do the ceiling in it and everything. This one over here we didn't do a lot with. It was a very old van and we were lucky to get it here, but it's a good storage area. And this one here on the, the right had to do some renovations and that put bunk beds in for kids and that sort of thing. Okay. What we've got between these two vans here is what we call a common area um, where we do a lot of cooking, sit around the table, um, have a bit of a yarn, a chit chat, 
play board games, things like that. It's uh, part of the morale post I put on the forum not so long ago. Morale is a very important thing, particularly living in conditions like this. Um, it's not real primitive. It might be three-star accommodation compared to some BOLs, but to us we've kept it relatively simple. Um, A lot of uh, generations these days when they go bush or go camping they like to take the kitchen sink, the TV, the laptop computer and all that sort of crap with them. This side here is completely off the grid. No power coming in, no t phone line, um, no other infrastructure, man-made infrastructure at all. To give us some idea of maintenance of sites like this, on the left hand side there we've got a steel frame with a um, plastic tarp over the top of it. We replaced that one yesterday. We're in the middle of summer here and it gets quite hot. To the right of that we've got to replace the tarp on that today. Now this is a good indication of what weather, seasonal conditions can do. That's something you've got to keep on top of. It's routine maintenance. Again, resource management, human resource management and material resource management. In the long term, shit hit the fan situation, we won't have plastic tarps. But we've got other things around here we can use for thatching on the roof, at least for to keep the sun off. Not necessarily waterproof. We've got the solar lighting system throughout these vans. I'll go into that later. Um, we keep a good stock of firewood here. Uh, these black wattle trees, when you cut them down and they dry out, um, very good source of heat. They burn very hot. In fact, going back to um, early last century to the middle parts of last century, uh, they're quite often used uh, for uh, commercial brickworks and kilns and that sort of thing because they gave off so much heat to um, fire the bricks and other clayware and stuff like that. The thing is it burns down completely to ash. Don't get much coals out of it at all but it's a good source of lye if you want to make your lye soap that sort of thing. Other trees we've got in the area we've got iron barks. I'll cover those later. I'll go for a bit of a walk around. So um, That'll give you some idea anyway, folks. Um, just a little video on a bit of bushcraft. We practice it all the time. And uh, takes a bit of skill, but more than anything else, it takes a lot of imagination, thinking outside the box, making something that's useful and functional. Doesn't look the best, don't care. It's functional, does the job. And that's what it's all about. Thanks very much, folks.